All right, well, in this video, we get to take a look at combined stresses. And what that means is we have a couple loads on uh, this beam, and they're pulling in different directions. If PX is pulling to the right, PY is pulling down. PX puts an axial force on this member. PY puts some bending you know, moment on this member. But they both cause stresses at point A. And they cause different kinds of stresses, right? This axial force causes an axial stress. This, this vertical force here causes a mo bending moment, which causes a bending stress. So we're going to see how those get combined to form two stresses. So to start this problem, what we're really going to do is we're just going to start with a simple free body diagram and really just go ahead and solve for our reactions. So to draw a free body diagram, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little beam here and a couple loads on it, right? So we have our PY of 30 newtons, all right? We have PX here of 800 newtons. And what we can kind of hopefully see, hopefully you've, you've done enough statics where um, you can see where, you know, we, we're going to have some reaction here. And I'm just going to call this RY, some reaction in the Y direction. Um, likewise, we're going to have some reaction in the X direction. But we're also going to have some moment at this point. And if we sum forces in the X direction, what we're going to find here is that RX equals 800 newtons. So nothing too crazy, but hopefully that makes sense. Uh, similarly, if we sum forces in the y direction, what we'll get here is our y equal to 30 newtons. And lastly, if we sum moments about some point, I like to pick the reaction point, so let's say point r, and that equals zero. Well, what we'll get here is, is essentially mr is gonna equal well 30 newtons times our 1.2 meters, which is gonna be 36 uh, newton and meters. All right, so so those are our reactions. Nothing too crazy, but next what we'll do is we can just go right ahead and, and find our stresses. So if we're taking a look at this, let's start with our axial stress. An axial stress is caused by what? An axial force, right? So what we need to know here is stress equals force over area. Two things, and, and as, as soon as we know the force and the area, we can just solve this, right? So again, what I said earlier was just an axial force causes an axial stress. So we're going to use this force of 800, our reaction here of 800. So 800 newtons divided by our area. And what area is subjected to the axial force? Well, it's really this whole area that is uh, perpendicular to the force okay so that area is simply going to be our 10 millimeters times 20 millimeters and we can put that in and when we solve this right we get 800 uh, divided by 10 divided by 20 and that's just going to be four uh, newtons per millimeter squared which is also a mega pascal Okay, so axial stress, check, we're done. Uh, take, let's take a look at uh, bending stress next, right? And, and for bending stress, it's a little bit more complicated because we need to know M, C, and I. Well, M is just going to be the moment at this point. So the moment at this point is going to be the moment at the reaction. It's just going to be 36 newton meters. So let's write our formula down and we'll start substituting in, right? So F, uh, B, the bending stress equals M, C over I. And again, we know this is 36 newton meters. I like to convert this to millimeters just to get my, my uh, units in newtons and millimeters here. So times a thousand millimeters per meter. So that's our moment, right? But what is this C and what is this I? Well, if we think about our section here for a second, we have a section that is 10 millimeters by 20 millimeters. And the distance C, okay, the distance C goes from the center of that to our point A up here. So if this is point A, this is gonna be our distance C. And C is just gonna equal 20 millimeters over two, which is gonna equal 10 millimeters. Okay, and likewise, what we're gonna need down here is we're gonna need our moment of inertia. And if you remember the moment of inertia formula for a rectangle, I equals BH cubed over 12. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna take that all and write it in uh, down here. So let's put that in. And, and we get our 10 millimeters for C, and, and then we also get 10 millimeters times 20 millimeters cubed over 12. And now we can solve this, plug it into our calculator. And we get 54 newtons per millimeter squared, which again is going to be megapascals.
Okay, so those are stresses at that point. But to kind of get a better understanding of this, uh, what we need to do is kind of understand how those stresses act. Because a bending stress and an axial stress, they're a little bit different. Axial stress is going to be uniform over this whole entire cross section. Whereas the bending stress is going to change from the top to the bottom. Right, the bending stress is dependent on this value C. So what I want to do here is I'm just going to scroll up, make a little bit more room, but I want to just draw a profile, okay? And then I'll do it prettier in a second, but let's take a look at a stress profile here. Right, if we think of the stress as, as, you know, in at this point here, at point A, this axial stress is causing tension. So, you know, what we can kind of see, maybe you can picture this, is there's going to be some uniform tension all along this face. So I'm just going to you know, highlight that in. This is going to be tension all along the face from the bottom to the top. The whole thing is in tension due to this uh, this force. Okay. Whereas with bending, bending is a little bit different, right? Because bending, what we have here is on the top, what we can see is this arrow is pulling away from the top, pushing towards the bottom, right? I mean, if you think of it like this, this arrow is coming like this. Well, it's pulling away from the top and pushing in at the bottom. And what happens there is our moment actually goes from tension down to compression. So we start at the top of tension, go to the bottom at compression. And now I'm going to shade that in also. And for compression, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use sort of this like pinkish reddish color just to indicate the idea that one stress is pulling away from that cut surface. One stress is kind of uh, developed because you, you have this moment, this force couple kind of pushing towards the surface, right? So one side's in tension, one side's in compression. And that's going to be true uh, of bending, right? Especially if, uh, you know, rectangular sections like this. Well, to get our combined stress, right, what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here and essentially we're going to add these, right? So we're going to take our axial stress, we're going to add it, you know, plus or minus to our bending stress to get our combined stress. And that is what we're doing here. So our formula for combined stress really looks like this. We say the combined stress, and I like to use the term F here, equals sigma, which is our axial stress, plus or minus our bending stress, right? And what we really need to know here is, well, what's the deal with these the signs, right? This is this is kind of the crux of combined stresses, because anybody can just add two things together, but the, the, the real crux of this is understanding the tension and compression piece. So I'm going to use the sign convention here, which says anything that's pulling away from the surface, right? So if this is our cut surface here, and, and you know, this is our cut surface here, we have tension on one side, compression on the other side, anything in tension, I'm going to call positive. So if we come up here, we can see at the top of the beam, we have positive. At the bottom of the beam, we have positive. Right at the top of the bending, we have positive. But at the bottom of the bending stress profile, we have negative. And, and that's really uh, something unique to bending, right? Axial force is always, you know, pulling in one direction. The stress is kind of pulling in the other. This moment, though, it's pulling away from the top and pushing in at the bottom. And that causes a change from tension to con compression for the bending stress. So we're going to say anything that's in tension is going to be positive, and, and likewise, anything that's in compression or pushing on a cut surface is going to be negative. So this is a sign convention we use. And when we look at this, we, if we want to find the, you know, the stress at point A, we're going to say, well, at the top of this beam, we have positive you know, tension, right? If we take a look back at this beam, what do we have? Well, this thing actually wants to, you know, pull away down here. The, this this uh, axial force is making it bigger. It's pulling in tension at the top. Bending is pulling in tension at the top. And when we come back down here, we're going to say that this stress at A equals positive 4 megapascals, because that's our axial stress, plus 54 megapascals because at the top that beam is in tension. At point A that beam is in tension. Okay, and when we add this all together we get 58 megapascals in tension at point A. Okay, 
And if we wanted to, we could we could take a look at this also. And I didn't draw this point in at first, but we could say, well, what about you know if we have this point B at the bottom of the beam, right? So this is B at the bottom, right? We could find the stress at that point as well. And if we did something similar here, right? What we would get was we would get well, FB just equals you know plus four megapascals because our axial stress is still in tension that hasn't changed, right? But now this is it. We get a minus 54 megapascals. Why? Because that bottom is in compression. And, and that's really the crux of it here. Because when we take 4 minus 54, we're going to get you know, minus 50 megapascals. And what you'll remember here is if I can write my megapascals, uh, this negative sign convention we're saying is going to be compression. So that, those are the answers, right? That's the answers. That's how we figure this out. So another way to look at this, right, is to take our stress profile again. And here we have our axial stress, right? And, and what's going on here is we're going to add, uh, okay, and what's going on here is we're going to add our bending stress. And when we do that, we get our combined stresses. And what you'll see here is the tension, the tension from the axial stress, right, is added to the tension uh, from the bending stress. And, and we get this big old tension over, over here, right? So this is kind of like our four plus our 54 gets to 58, right? And likewise, if we think of it like this, right? What do we have? We have tension down here plus the compression, but this compression is really negative. And, and when we do that, right, we have this negative value that's getting pulled back by some positive value, right? So so this amount is kind of going to kind of like cancel out. And when we solve it, we end up with a sort of a smaller value here. So we have our four for our axial stress. We have our 54 still for our bending stress. But when we come back over here, we end up with a total uh, of 50. Just another way to think of it. It's uneven because you know we have the tension on the top, the compression on the bottom, and when they add up together on the top, they get you know 58. But on the bottom, you have to subtract off this 54. So just another way to think of it. Another way to look at it. All right, so when we come back to this problem, that's it, right? We went through in the the basics. I mean, this is a complicated problem, but we have to go through our statics, right? We have to go through our stress analyses, and then we have to know how to add them together. All right, so I hope this video helps. I hope the visuals kind of help you picture the stress profiles a little bit. But if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment below or feel free to hit the like button, all right? But hopefully these videos help you to become a better engineer. So until next time, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.